Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and welcome to the 101st episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Of course, remember that the new third generation iPad giveaway I'm doing in collaboration with the members of iPod Uplink is still going on. And of course, one simple way to gain entries is to just like this video and leave a comment down below in the comment section with the tag 100th. So just 100th. And to gain an additional six entries, just be sure to check out the link I have down below in the more info. And you can also watch the previous episode, the 100th episode of this series, Best Tech and Phone Rumors, so you know what exactly you have to do to enter the giveaway. And we will make additional announcements as the giveaway comes to a close, but again, just be sure to enter on this video by leaving a comment in the comment section. And to preface this episode, I just wanted to say that I will be talking about Apple's next generation iPhone a lot, and this is somewhat of a continuation from the last episode, so just be sure you make sure to check that video out first if you haven't already, and then you can come back to this video to kind of get fully updated on the situation and all of the recent leaks pertaining to Apple's upcoming iPhone. So whether you love it or hate it, the vertically enhanced two-tone back design is certainly the focal point of the plethora of recent rumors and leaks surrounding the next generation iPhone. And one recent report went into detail on why Apple may choose to go with a two-tone back on the upcoming iPhone. And the reason is actually quite simple. They're saying that Apple could bring their unibody technology to the iPhone. So when looking at the back and the enclosure, the metal centerpiece is actually thought to be the unibody plate. Now the two pieces at the top or bottom, whether they're glass or plastic, are said to function as sort of windows for the antennas to boost the signal strength. And what's interesting when you look at it, the break between the metal unibody plate on the back and the other material matches up perfectly with the new antenna brakes that Apple first introduced with the CDMA version of the iPhone 4, which of course is the same antenna system that the iPhone 4S uses. And this theory doesn't seem too outlandish and it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Next up, a poster on the Wii iPhone form leaked two images of what they're claiming to be the next generation iPhone's logic board. And for those of you that don't know, the logic board is a key component to the iPhone as it connects the processor and other various chips that enable the device to function properly. Additionally, the site Nowhere Else took a previously leaked casing image and they overlaid the leaked logic board picture on the top of it and the holes seemed to match up perfectly. Also, the same individual behind this leak posted images of the iPhone 4S's logic board and they turned out to be accurate in the end. So could these images just further confirm the same leak design we've been seeing these past couple of weeks? Hopefully we'll know soon enough. Of course, it's rumored that Apple is scheduled to hold their annual iPhone unveiling event on September 12th. And finally, to confirm the iPhone 5 or next generation iPhone news in this episode, Smartphone Medic actually posted a comparison video of different leaked parts with the current iPhone 4S parts, so just be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it already. Of course, links to everything will be down below in the more info. Moving on, a few recent reports have suggested that Apple will indeed release a new mini iPad. Now, it said that the design of the device will more closely match that of the iPhone or iPod Touch than the current iPad, because it's rumored to be the same thickness as the iPod touch and also it's speculated that the bezel around the sides of the screen will be smaller than the bezel towards the top and bottom of the display. And basically three reports have said that exact same thing, of course citing their own sources. Also nowhere else leaked images of what they think could possibly be the flex cable for a mini iPad. The cable includes connections for the home button, the headphone jack, and the new redesigned dock connector that's speculated to be on Apple's next generation iPhone. And when comparing this cable to a leaked iPhone 5 compared Component. It definitely has that Apple-esque feel and it certainly seems authentic. Moving on, Apple was granted two touchscreen patents they filed for back in 2007. Now the first one actually outlines the different combinations as to where they could integrate the different touch sensing elements into the liquid crystal display. And this could possibly pave the way for more precise, sturdy, and thinner touchscreens to be used in next generation devices. And finally, to conclude the news, I just wanted to say that Pod2G has recently outlined an SMS vulnerability inside of all iOS versions. Now this could potentially leave iPhone owners vulnerable to different phishing attempts as well as other malicious attacks. And I also just want to give a quick shout out to a website called jailbreakingios6.com. There you will find various news pertaining to iOS 6 as well as jailbreaking. And of course a link to that and everything else I talked about in this episode will be down below so just be sure to check it out. For the question of the day, this time I want to know what you guys think about an iPad mini. Do you think Apple will release a smaller tablet closer to 7 inches? Again, just let me know your thoughts in the comments section or on Best Tech Info. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be updated every time I release new videos. To be updated more often, just be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.